Welcome to Toastmaster Time, the show that's got everybody talking. I'm Justin Paris, and I'm very excited to be your host for tonight's episode. Tonight's episode is a special one because we have students from the Gavel Club here with us today. To start things off, I want to introduce you to two of the Bay Area Youth Leadership Program and Gavel Club coordinators, Sabitha Setlor and Shalini Suravarjala. Sabitha and Shalini, Welcome to Toastmaster Time. So tell us about these youth leadership programs and the Galva Clubs. Thank you, Justin. The Toastmasters Youth Leadership Program is a workshop consisting of eight two-hour sessions. This program is typically offered to young adults in the age group of 12 to 18. During these sessions, they build up their communication skills by giving speeches. Alongside that, they also take leadership roles, like being the Toastmaster, the grammarian, the timer. There are various roles for leadership that they practice. And as they go along, they prepare themselves to a final showcase event where their parents and friends come and see them show their skills that they have developed over the past nine, nine or eight weeks. At this showcase event, you can see the coordinators can get a gratification for all the effort that they have put into. Me personally, when I saw the parents have tears in their eyes when their own kids were performing, that told me we have to keep running these uh, youth leadership programs. But then they also grow into something more sustainable, which Shalini will tell us about. As the students pass through their youth leadership program, they want something long term. They want to get into Gava Club, which is a youth Toastmasters club. And they learn leadership, networking, punctuality. They learn a lot more than youth leadership program in a long term sessions. And we have multiple Gava clubs that we've opened up in all of District 57, and I'm very proud to say that all of these clubs host all these youth, le youth leaders, and we host an inter gavel club contest also every year for these students. Awesome. It makes sense, the progression from the youth leadership program to the gavel clubs. Tell us about the results you've seen in the students who participate in the YLP and the gavel clubs. Well, the students who are there in the Gavel Club, we've had students who go all the way through to middle school and high school for seven years. They're alumni. They help and they get back again into Adult Toastmasters Club. They open up corporate clubs in wherever they are going to work. I've seen it in Salesforce. I've seen it at Workday. And now they also come back to give back to Toastmasters. They judge our inter-Gavel Club contests. And it is very gratifying to see their growth as they continue their journey with Toastmasters. And not only that, the parents of these students also get encouraged when they see their children grow like this and they join the adult Toastmasters mm -hmm. programs. So all in all, the youth leadership program leads to gavel clubs, which in turn leads to adult Toastmasters clubs, which I like to call the triple play mm -hmm. program. That's awesome. I love how the kids are actually inspiring the parents. That, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal story. So Shalini and Savita, thank you so much for the work you do to help the youth in our community develop their public speaking and leadership skills, skills that are gonna help them for the rest of their life. So now it's time to showcase and see the results of the gavel clubs. We're gonna start off by having a speaker deliver a prepared speech, and then that speaker will be evaluated by a speech evaluator. In addition to learning public speaking skills, the Gavel Club students also learn how to evaluate speakers by providing feedback that is positive, 
constructive and overall encouraging so that the speaker is encouraged to keep working and trying again. Our first speaker is Rushita Deshmukh from Grandios Gavaliers. Rushita, thank you so much for coming on Toastmaster time. Thank you for having me. So tell us, how long have you been a member of the Youth Leadership Program and the Gavel Clubs? So the Youth Leadership Program, YLP, I've been there for a summer session. And for Gavel Clubs, mine is grandiose. I've been there for about four years now. Phenomenal. What have you learned through your experience with the Gavel Club? Through my experience, I've learned different ways that could improve my public speaking in every way that matters, in public or at school or giving presentations to an outreach program or anything like that. Wow, so it's applicable across basically all aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to rock out your speech for us? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to give you some time to get ready while I share information on Toastmasters with our audience at home. Toastmasters International is a nonprofit educational organization that helps people from all walks of life, backgrounds, and experience levels build confidence through stronger communication and leadership skills. Toastmasters has over 14,000 clubs, over 270,000 members in 148 countries. For more information, you can check out toastmasters.org. Now it's time to hear Rushita's speech. Ruchita Deshmukh, dream, believe, achieve, unleashing your potential. Dream, believe, achieve, unleashing your potential. Ruchita Deshmukh. Ever since I was a little girl, I've had all these role models. Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender, Wonder Woman from DC, Black Widow from Marvel. I wanted to be just like them. I aspired to have their level of finesse and their talent in martial arts. So I signed up for karate classes. Through karate, discipline has taught me two things, the values of consistency and dedication. These two values that have served me well. Now, karate isn't just about physical expertise. You don't just like pow pow your way onto black belt. No, it's about mental fortitude as well. Now, whether it's sparring a difficult opponent having a final exam, or any problem overall. You learn to remain calm, focused, and resilient. And with that in mind, I signed up for my red black belt test. Now I've done many tests like this to get where I am today. But this test, something about this test was different. Days leading up to the test, I would practice. But I wouldn't practice out of confidence. I would practice out of fear. Because there was a small seed of negativity that had planted itself in my brain. It started with two words. What if? What if I didn't practice and I made a mistake on the test? What if I went too fast and on the test I didn't make it enough? What if me and my partner were on different levels and we somehow messed the test? What if, what if, what if, and soon that seed had grown itself into a tree. A tree so immense that I almost wanted to postpone the test. But no, I told myself I was doing this test no matter what, because this is the way I would propel forward. This was the way I would progress forward. So the test, the day of the test came faster than I expected. Attention, the instructor yelled sharply. All of us quickly scrambled to our feet. And so we started the first curriculum of the test, kickboxing pattern. Now kickboxing pattern is relatively easy. There are three counts, and you learned this at white belt. So this was nothing new. This was easy. So I did all three counts of kickboxing pattern. But at the end, I realized something. I went a little too fast. I got a little too excited. I went all full out. And this was bad. Because I still had the rest of the test to go. <laughs> Internally, I was panicking because this was not good. Externally, I kept a calm, cool composure. Because presentation is just as more important as technique. So technique after technique, MMA, mixed martial arts, BJJ, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, sparring kicks, sticks, forms, PAG A7, PAG A2, cu curriculum after curriculum, I started getting tired. But no, I told myself I was gonna do this, I was gonna finish this because I was going home with that belt no matter what. So fast forward to the end of the test with my last herder le left. 
board breaking. Now board breaking was easy. Being someone of my belt, I had broken many boards before, but during a test, board breaking means something else. It doesn't mean kicking a board and going on with the rest of your class. It means a pass or fail. You break the board, you pass. You don't, you fail and you have to retake the whole test. So this is where that tree I was talking about before came back in. Now this tree grew even bigger. <laughs> and right as I was about to kick, it told me, what if I don't break it? What if I retest? But no, this time I chopped down the tree. I wasn't gonna listen to that tree anymore. Why am I gonna let a tree dictate my life? No, I looked at the board, that board looked at me, and in three, two, one, crack! I broke the board. A huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I jumped up and I said, yes, I was elastic. <sighs> Looking back on the car ride home with my new belt secured around my waist, I thought about one thing. I thought about why this task had been so daunting when in reality, it was so easy. I had passed this test with flying colors. What was so different about this? Then I realized that the biggest barriers we face are the ones we make up in our own mind. So face each challenge, knowing that with perseverance and belief in yourselves, you can achieve anything you put your mind to. The sky is not the limit. Thank you, Ruchita, for that speech. I love the message about having a goal and breaking through the, bar the various barriers. I was secretly hoping you'd break a board here in the studio. <laughs> Ruchita's evaluator is Jolene Pan from CBC Gavel Club. Jolene, share with us what you thought about Ruchita's speech. Ruchita gave a very powerful speech about how you should never give up because the sky is not the limit. Ruchita starts off with a hook that I'm pretty sure most of us are very familiar with. She starts off by saying that she aspires to be like Black Widow from Marvel and Wonder Woman from DC. These are both superheroes that many of us have heard before, so the audience is able to resonate with her speech. Something else that Ruchita does really well is that she has strong vocal variety. Some of her sentences are very loud, while others are very soft. This vocal variety captures the attention of the audience and brings her speech to life. Another thing that, Suchita, that Rachita does really well is that she weaves, into, weaves her sentence into very specific little details, such as when she describes everything that she's, that's going into her brain at, this, at the time. For example, she talks about how, how the, the, the guy had to go, that she had to go into attention and how sometimes she was questioning herself when she says, what if? What if I don't do well? What if I fail? These different kinds of sentences, once again, captures the attention of the audience and brings her speech to in life, something that is very important in Toastmasters. Thank you, Jolene, for that evaluation of Ruchita's speech. I love the energy and the way you made specific points and included specific examples from her speech. One thing I love about Toastmasters are the speech contest. I love competing in them, and I love watching them because it's so exciting and exhilarating. The Gavel Clubs also have speech contests, and we are very fortunate to have two recent winners from local Gavel Club contest here with us today. Our first Gavel Club winner is Purandar Ayalaso Mayajula, from Gallant Gaviliers. Parandar, welcome to Toastmaster time. Thank you so much for having me. So tell us, how long have you been in the Youth Leadership Program and Gavel Club? I was in the Youth Leadership Program for one session, mm -hmm. which is eight weeks, and I was also in Gavel Club for one and a half years. The half year was before COVID, and the rest of the year was after. If there's one thing that really stuck out to you as something really valuable that you learned, what would you say it is? I, my first thought would be public speaking, but I would like to go with leadership, since okay. leadership, I, in my opinion, is a more important trait that you need to have going farther and farther into your life. I agree, I agree. When you think about your experience, what difference has it made in your school life and also things you might be involved with in the community? 
mainly for school we have a lot of presentations and with presentations you have to talk a lot and you have to act confident or be confident in those things and the gavel club has really helped me has really given me that boost of confidence that I need to actually go throughout with my presentation. I'm glad to hear that. All right, you ready to deliver your speech? Yep. Okay, go ahead and get ready while I share more information about Toastmasters with our audience at home. Okay. If you're looking to improve your public speaking or leadership skills, let's say for job interviews or your current career or social situations, Toastmasters has a program called Pathways. Pathways has 11, 11 paths that you can choose from depending on what element of communication or leadership you're looking to hone. Some of those paths include presentation mastery, dynamic leadership, effective coaching, and engaging humor. You can find more about the Pathways at Toastmasters.org. Let's hear Parandar's speech. Parandar Ayalaso Mayajula Raincoat, Raincoats, Purandar, Ayalaso, Mayajula. Alone, lost in the dark, your own thoughts. As you keep going and you keep thinking, you watch all the other kids play in the shower of opportunities, the rain, with just, and yet there's just one thing stopping you. The fear of stepping up. This raincoat blocking you from touching the water. For me, I had one raincoat. Talking. So let's go back to my perspective. June 19th, 2019. I wake up and I know what's coming. My mom, I hear her storming in and, wake up, wake up, we have to pack. I knew. I knew we were moving, but was it this soon? Seriously? It's fine, maybe we're just moving a mile or two miles away. No, we're moving from Fremont all the way to Dublin. Now this is a huge change since this is almost 40, 50 miles away and I can't see my old friends and I have to go to a new school and it's really, really scary. But I think, okay, it's fine. It's still June, we still have a month of, of summer break. We can still keep going, right? No, because that month feels like a blink to me. I close my eyes, open them, and school started. I walk in the first day, extremely nervous, knees shaking. I can't make out a word, even to say hello to the teacher. I walk into the classroom. I find a seat in the back because I do not want to be seen. All the other kids are talking to their friends, saying, yo, I've missed you. I haven't seen you in so long, and I have nobody to talk to like that. It feels weird. I continue throughout the first, second, third, and it gets to a week. And I'm starting to think, no, this isn't right. It's been seven days and I still haven't made a friend. What do I do? I start to think, okay, maybe I should talk. That's not happening. I'm not talking. That's not happening. I just wait it out. And luckily, a raindrop. It sneaks through the raincoat and falls. A kid walks up to me and says, hey, I see you don't talk to anybody during lunch. You wanna play soccer with us? I was thinking, yeah. Without thinking, I say, yeah. And yet I know who this person is. He's a school bully. Anybody he sees, he'll relentlessly harass and annoy. And yet I still say yes. Although one thing you have to think about with raindrops is that they do get a little annoying when a lot of them fall on you. So his entire group comes up to me and I'm starting to think, this guy is annoying. He's really mean and he's using me basically. So I start to drift apart. And what I realize is that this kid took me up the steps and he pushed me right off. Now let's take this from my approach, okay? So let's try a sport that we like. We like badminton and tennis. Okay, this school looks pretty good. Maybe they have those clubs. No. Matter of fact, they don't have any clubs except for basketball. Basketball. I'm tiny at this point. I can run at a max of five miles per hour and, I am no, and I'm not taller than any other kid in the school. There's no chance I am playing basketball. What I learned from these two experiences is that if I wanna make a friend and meet someone, 
I have to step up by myself. I have to take that first step. I can't let anybody else do it for me. And so I try it. For the next two days, I scout out people that I can actually talk to. They seem nice. They're not, they're not mean to anybody and they're not fake. So I'll try talking to them. And guess what? It worked perfectly. I met this kid. He's talking to me. I, I go up to him and say, hey, can I join your little soccer circle? Of course, no problem. What? No, no problem? I, no, 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 nothing like that. No problem? Okay. Well, soccer isn't my favorite sport, but it's a step in the right direction. Even though I'm not friends with this kid anymore, I know that he, just talking to him, is the reason I'm still confident to this day and I can make friends. Just this little bit of confidence, just stepping up, going that extra step, is really what I needed. Even if it's difficult, even if it's a fake it till you make it situation, it's still really helpful to just try it. And because of me trying this, I got to where I am. So instead of using this raincoat, blocking all the rain, what if I threw it aside and I let, I let all the rain fall onto me? So you know what? Let's try this with our confidence too. So let's rewind back to August 13th when school starts. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. You want to be friends with us? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Parandar, for that speech about friendships and initiating friendships and the benefits of, of doing so. As I mentioned, we are fortunate to have two recent Gavel Club winners here in the studio. Parandar won the middle school speech contest, and we're fortunate to have the winner of a high school Gavel Club contest. That individual is Dayakshin Arumugam from Grandiose Gavaliers. Dayakshin, welcome to Toastmaster time. Thank you. So tell us, how long have you been a member of the YLP and Gavel Clubs? I've been in YLP for one session, mm -hmm. and I've been in Gavel Club for around three years. Perfect. So when you think back on your experience, and if somebody were to ask you, what's one golden nugget that you've learned from your experience, what would you say to that person? I would say that it's actually hand movements because it demonstrates a lot of confidence in your speeches and in presentations. Yeah, it adds a lot of emotion and feeling when you speak. When it comes to your school, what impact has your experience in the Galva Club had on your academics? It, had make me, it has made me so confident and it also gave me a bit more attention to small details like hand movements mm -hmm. or talking more louder and when you're talking about a sad topic maybe quieting your voice down a bit and s small details which can make speeches and presentations much better. I like that you pointed out so being self-aware can lead to successful communication. Yes. All right. You ready to deliver your speech for us? Yep. All right. I'll give you some time to go ahead and get ready. The, the best way to learn about Toastmasters is to actually check out a club meeting. There are clubs literally everywhere. And you'll find that each meeting has three main parts. In the first part, members give prepared speeches, which they've been preparing using one of the many pathways that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. The second part is table topics, where people work on impromptu and on-the-fly speaking skills. And then finally, in the third part, we work on evaluations where we give people feedback so that they can continue to improve and grow. To keep things flowing smoothly in a Toastmasters meeting and to keep things organized, there are a plethora of roles that people can take on. So for more information on where you can find a club near you, you can check out toastmasters.org. At this point, it's time for Dioxin to deliver his speech. Dayakshin Arumugam, the mountain man, the mountain man, Dayakshin Arumugam. A mountain stands tall, overlooking two villages. Even though these villages had seen the same mountain, they were surely different in status. One village was like paradise, with shops, 
schools, and businesses. Plants sprouted rapidly, and water filled up springs. The commute was really small. Anybody could live in this one village. But we can't say the same thing about the other side. Plants withered due to infertile soil. People's heads lay low with empty stomachs. The only way for these people to get access to food, water, and education was if they took the long and grueling path across the mountain to get to the other side. Hello, my name is Dayakshin, and today I'm going to talk about the legacy of the mountain man. Manji and his family are unfortunate as they had to live their lives in this unrich condition. They would doze off and dream about roti dripping with melted ghee, but then have to wake up and face the harsh reality of crossing the mountain just to survive. One day, Manji's wife had to take this 40 mile long path just to get water for her family. Her feet ached from the commute and her head spun from the heat. But sadly, on the way back, she had taken the wrong step. The rocks under her feet had crumbled and she had lost her footing. Manji's wife had fallen off the mountain. She needed help fast. Even though the fall hadn't killed her, it had surely injured her. Everything happened so quickly. Manji and all the villagers knew that she needed to go to the hospital stat. But then the thought seeped into their heads and their faces were pale in horror. The nearest hospital was on the other side of the mountain. They were too late. Halfway from crossing the mountain, Manji's wife had sadly passed away due to blood loss. This loss had shook Manji to the core. If the mountain wasn't there, then their children would not have been motherless. If the mountain wasn't there, then the people in the village could have access to food and water. Children could have access to education. No, Manji was gonna move this mountain at all costs. He scoured around his poor village, trying to find something he could use to move this colossal mountain. And finally, he found one person who was willing to give him a worn hammer and chisel for some goats. He took this deal with open arms. He walked up to the top of the mountain, placed the chisel, aimed the hammer and swung, clink. The hammer flew out of his hands and landed by the, his side. It was like the mountain was smirking at him. He lift the chisel and under it, he'd see the tiniest of cracks. I can't do this, he thought. No, I'm going to do this. Day by day, he swung at the mountain. The crack soon became a dent. The dent became a two foot hole and the hole became deeper, deeper and deeper. But the villagers had not seen Manji as a man who was moving a mountain. They thought he was wasting his time. But even though the villagers had bad mouth with him, he still kept on going. 10 years had passed and people could see the effect he made from afar. But even with this progress, they still thought it was a fool's errand. Manji will realize that what he's doing is wrong, they said. There's a reason why nobody has ever tried mining through the mountain. And yes, there is a reason why nobody has ever tried mining through this colossal mountain. It's because they did not have the same dedication that Manji had. As the mountain's mass shrunk, Manji's beard grew. 22 years had passed since the first strike and Manji, Manji, he was the talk of both villages. A single man had put in the effort and dedication and nearly mined through a whole mountain. A crowd gathered as the rocks had fallen. People could see a clear path from one village to the other through the mountain. It was like the mountain was moved apart. Now, people could have easy access to food and water. Children could have access to education. And this is all thanks to Munji, the mountain man. In our society, people recognize a problem, but then avoid such things. But in this story, Munji took his time and put in effort to solve this problem, so nobody needed to avoid it. People will always badmouth a person who's taking a more longer 
and more painful path, but can only envy at how high this path brings them. But the most important part of the story is that it's a real story and Munji's a fellow human like us, whose selfless attitude had saved his whole village from sorrow. Think about a world with more people like Munji. I want you all to keep this story in mind. And whenever the world brings up a tall, powerful, and colossal problem, I want you all to be the ones to take the chisel and strike it with the hammer. Thank you. Thank you, Dioxin, for sharing that riveting story. Really inspiring in terms of being selfless and compassionate and what that can do for the benefit of mankind. That's all the time we've got for tonight's episode. I want to thank you for watching. Toastmaster Time is filmed in the San Francisco Bay Area. For more information, you can check out toastmastertime.com. Toastmaster Time is sponsored by District 57 Toastmasters. For more information on District 57, be sure to check out d57tm.org. And for more information on Toastmasters International, including on the Youth Leadership Program and Gavel Clubs, and where you can find a club near you, be sure to visit toastmasters.org. I want to thank our wonderful staff and volunteers here at the Midpen Media Center. I want to express my gratitude to Savitha, Shalini, Ruchita, Jolene, Purandar, and Dayakshin for joining us here tonight. We are very grateful for that. On behalf of all of us at Toastmaster Time, I want to encourage you to join Toastmasters and to keep on talking.